What's up, my people? This is Jones VMXO at the Cube Session, and today I have a special guest in the building. Her name is Bichanda, one of our favorite Zambian female rappers out here. And uh, today we're going to have a conversation about everything involving music, life, and and the like. So uh, first, first things first, B, I would love to welcome you to this session. Thank you. Uh, I'll let you introduce yourself first. Maybe I've missed out something. Okay, my name is Walia Chanda, aka B Chanda. I'm in my final year in economics. Yeah, that's all. <laughs> that's all? Okay, yeah, you're in the final year this year. So this year you're graduate? Yes, yes I am. That's nice. How would you feel about it? Happy. Yeah, how <laughs> Okay, that's all. Okay, now B, thanks for joining us and uh, we've been wanting to do this with you, but then time hasn't been wanted to do this earlier, like the beginning of the year. Mm -hmm. But then due to time and plans, things weren't just being put together. So this time around, uh, I'm glad we're here. And the first question I'd love to ask is, how are you doing? I'm fine. Just exhausted from school, work, music, but I'm fine. Over fine. Over. How have you been? Sure, you've been fine. Yes, I've been okay. Been right. Just feel? busy, extra busy. How how busy? Like what's what's keeping you busy? Right now it's school, finishing my long practicals. Yeah, these two. How is it going so far? Not bad. Not bad. The no diploma bad. is hard. I didn't think it was this hard doing it on your own. Yeah. What do you mean? Didn't you didn't think it was going to be hard doing it on your own? I expected like... it to be something like. I don't know. You but you, re you've got a, a special project that you're doing on your own. A, a particular topic you're supposed to look at. So, so I'm are you given options or you just pick for yourself? You're given options, but you can also work with your lecturer to pick something. Yeah, so he helped me pick. Uh -huh. That's what's up. That's what's up. Okay, so now, uh, uh, since was that this the year has just begun. Okay, when like in the fourth, like, the the one like in the fourth month, eh? Yes. So like the year has just begun. What are you looking forward to this year? This year I'm looking forward to graduating. I'm looking forward to going home. You want to go home? Yes. You don't want to stay back in us? It's an option, but I still feel like I need a break. From what? This place. Or from school. From this place or from school? From school. And I haven't been home for what? Almost five years now. I haven't been home in like six years before. <laughs> different. <laughs> it's different. I'm just looking forward to going home, graduation, and more collaborations in terms of music. Collaborations. Mm -hmm. Like with who? Do you have any any person you want to collaborate with in my yeah, a lot of them. There's so many. Yeah, can, can can you name two? Okay, I can name. Okay, five. Since you've got a lot, five. It would be nice to be on a track with Chef. Chef. I know it's it's very yeah, it's that's... very. Oh no! But listen, Fuck I like I like the 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 ambitious the ambitiousness uh -huh. of that choice, Aisha. Like you fact, it's not that hard. I think to get. To get I don't to think so either. It's, it's not that hard. Mm -hmm. You just have to, to give him a project that you think is going to be worth his time, like a good project. Mm -hmm. Unless most people jump on the track if it's nice and if it appeals to, you know, to, to, to them. Of course. But I think I would also start with, I guess I can say, those that are on Cleo Ice Queen's EP. These ah, type are like Princess okay. Natasha Chanza. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah, no, that's tough. Yeah. So you just want to collaborate with uh, just Zambian Zambian, no. Zambian artist. Zambian. Leave them alone, but it's a starter. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. I feel like it's a starter. I've just been based here. Now okay. let's try and okay, okay. Yeah. that's dope. That's dope. All right, and uh, one one more thing, like okay. just this year has uh, has just begun, and you you want to you're looking forward to more collaboration and music and stuff. Out. But then, like, what are the things that you want to change, like? about myself no. as an individual as an individual as an artist or oh, it's like you know what i used to do this shit, but then i don't want to do this anymore like oh you know what 
I want to be doing more of this. Like, what are the things that you want to change? You're looking forward to change. I hope to accept criticism for what it is. I don't take criticism very well. I hate <laughs> the passion. What's, what's, what's the criticism that made you click at some point? If someone criticized you and you're like, I, I don't like this and then, you know. There's one comment that keeps coming up with regards to music. It's, um, I need to work on my lyrics. They're not good enough. That one hurts me so much. <laughs> what do you mean your lyrics are not good enough? Like, uh, Well, okay, when I sit and listen to all songs I've ever done, be it features or a single, I kind of understand you're a rapper. You need to be able to, I guess, be lyrically intelligent. Yeah. Am I storytelling? Am I just trying to show off that I can rhyme? Oh, I can hit punchlines and I understand. For the most part, I think I'm mostly storytelling. Yeah. And I think this song I just did with CK's Buddy Wasso was one where like I tried to put in punchlines here and there. Uh, so, yeah. And then that comment still came up. It still came up. <laughs> it still so, came up, work on your lyrics. So I'm like... Okay, maybe, maybe they're right, maybe they're wrong, but there's a reason they've said it. I think I want to reach that point where I can not take it in a way that's offensive, yeah. but try to look back at my work and be like, okay, I do need to work on something. That's if I see yeah. it fit, but not get offended by it. That's what's up. That's what's up. I hope, I hope that works out in, in your so favor. All right, now let's dive into the music. Okay. Let's dive into the music. So you, as an artist, mm -hmm. you are signed and uh, you, you're signed to a record label at the moment, right? Yes, Nalogy yes. Music. How, how is it so far? I am comfortable. You're That's comfortable. what I can say. Yeah. You I like it? Like everything is vibes. Too. I like it. It's a different setup because I've been back at home. Mm. I know I was younger. Maybe I didn't understand most things, but I've been in a... How can I put it? I guess it was some form of competition where we got to meet some promoters yeah. and organizers who were interested in, I guess, young talent. But in a way, there was no opportunity to actually learn and grow. Yeah. It was more of they were just focusing on who's the best yeah. and they knew who they wanted and they let us go. So I don't know how, I don't even know who won that time, who got the opportunity to go ahead. I don't really remember. It was a long time ago. Yeah. So I feel comfortable under the logic. You feel comfortable. Okay. And uh, I, as, as an artist, mm -hmm. as an artist right now, like in your career, like how do you feel? Are you okay? Like you like the the the, the trajectory of your of your career or it's, it's something that you, you know, you keep questioning or it's like everything is focused like after this this is this is it i feel it's on the right path but, but there's still a lot of work to do like what kind of work do you think you want to do so i feel like i've been able to at least gain some form of audience here because of the zambians based here which i'm definitely grateful for but besides that audience, I need to build back at home. Yeah. If I was to stay here, I also need to expand that. I can't just stay within forever. So I feel like I'm on the right path, but I need to continue trying by all means to push as much as possible. And okay. it comes to music branding, keep on writing, keep on producing, consistency matters. I understand that. That was one bad trait I've had for the four years that I've been here. Yeah. I would release this after one year. After one year, <laughs> I, I really lacked consistency, but now I feel like I'm getting somewhere. That, that's dope. Okay, now another thing is like, uh, how is it like being the only Zambian female rapper here in Russia? <laughs> I'm not the only one. Yeah, I just look, forgot. I just forgot. Who, who else is there? Like, I just. Else? I don't know if she'll kill me if I say it, but I 
forgot to ask, but there is one more person. I haven't heard her personally, but I know she's also a rapper. She's Zambia? Yes, yeah, she's Zambia. For real? Yes. Who, who, what's her name? What's her name? That's what I'm saying. I don't know if she'll kill me. I don't no, know. no, don't worry. Like, okay. Her name is Justina. Justina? If I'm not mistaken, she's doing medicine. But you are. She's a Justina. I don't I don't know. I don't know, but yeah, she's also a rapper. What, when when did she come? I've never I've never heard of her. She is in third year. For her? Yeah, third year. Uh, anyway, we we'll, we we'll look into that. But then, like, my question still stands. How is how is how does it feel like being you know like if somebody wants to call a Zambian female rapper, mm-hmm. like you're the first person that pops up. It's like okay. There's a pioneer here, good bitch, and she's the female rapper that you can call. How does it feel? Like, how do you feel yourself? It's pressure. It's pressure. Like, yeah. what, what kind of pressure? First of all, I need to, there are a lot of things I need to look at. I need to look at the fact that I'm in a stage or I'm on this path where I'm supposed to be releasing more music as yeah. compared to trying to perform on stage. So, okay, anyway, before, let me just put it before that. I felt the pressure in the sense that, ah, maybe going to perform in places like La Cabana. I've been there several times. The first time I was called to perform, I was, it's my first time. I'm, I used to be shy. I'm no longer shy, at least I'm trying. I used to feel the need to make sure I look good. Mm-hmm. I practice, I'll go over my lyrics over and over again, but I won't forget. Sometimes I forget the lyrics on stage. And there's that thing on my face where if you're close to me, okay, even if you're not close to me, you could tell like she's forgotten her lyrics. And it feels like you're supposed to lead by example. I'm not supposed to be comfortable just because I'm the only one. There's still the guys, there's still Zambian guys who have been doing it for a while now. They're used to it. They know their lyrics by heart, stage presence, how they manage themselves. So I felt, I felt it was pressurizing. I still feel it's. There's a lot of pressure. And how, how are you working towards that? So far, I'm more confident on stage. Yeah, well, yeah. We've not, me personally, I've noticed from what I've seen. Uh-huh. Like, back then, it was like, okay, yeah, I have men, I have men. But now it's like, you can tell there's a level of confidence in that. Mm-hmm. And uh, I'm proud of you, Aisha. Thank keep, you. Keep, keep, keep it up, Aisha. Thank you. That's nice. All right, and okay, well, uh, as a female rapper, eh? And the, the Zambian music industry in Russia here, it's just, this is like the early stages, eh? Like you guys have been like the pioneers of the, of the whole situation where like back then people used to fear to venture into other things apart from studies, eh? Mm-hmm. But then now it's like you guys have uh, an understanding and the platform and you want, you, you are doing things like you're, you're making music, you're putting it out there. And then, like, you are the pioneers of this thing as it is growing, right? Mm-hmm. Like, what challenges do you face in, in, in the process of, like, growing a Zambian, you know, music industry, like, here in the diaspora? Like, what, what, ch- what, ch- what kind of challenges do you, do you guys face? I think the first thing is the language. The language. You, okay. Under, let's say, under the pretext that you want to you feel you can become famous here. Mm-hmm. I feel like um, Russia is one of those countries that need you to adapt to their mm-hmm. culture. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, it's possible to bring your music to them, but you also need to understand that they have their own yeah. culture. Quite right, they listen to music done by different international artists, especially, of course, every, most people listen to most musicians that are based in America because it's in English. But I feel if you if you have the mindset of you think you'd get famous in Russia, and for us as Zambian artists, it's more of adapting to their language, their culture, yeah. be it the slang, which fairly, on a personal level, I found it a bit difficult. That's why you've never heard me do something yeah. in Russian. If I'm going to do it, which I plan on doing it, I want it to be not perfect, but something that will most likely three quarters of that song will be Russian, yeah. Russian lyrics. Yeah. So for us here, it's okay. I feel like the extent of our audience just goes up to like maybe Zambians and then some foreigners, yeah. but 
not like necessarily expanding to the Russians as well because you have to at least try to do something in their language. So yeah. the language basically and making it. But then I, I, I know there's a lot of, uh, I've got a lot of friends who listen to like music that's not Russian. Like mm-hmm. they, they want to, to tap into other you know, genres of music. Right? Mm-hmm. So like they ask like, oh, which artists do you know who are in Russia who sing songs which are not Russia? Okay. So like, no, I've got my people. You can listen to these guys. Like they listen, they 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 make music and they are there. And to 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 my surprise, most of them are just are actual fans as mm-hmm. we speak now. So it's like, I think uh, you just keep on doing what you do, right? Yes. Like you do you. If you want, you can add your your your. Look at, okay, I like CKZ, eh? like mm-hmm. CK is one of my favorites. <laughs> I Good. Do there. Uh-huh. So the thing is like, his well, past, past music, the music he did in the past, like mm-hmm. there was some Russian to eat, even boys, like the music he did bad in the past, there's some Russian to eat, like mm-hmm. that, that is enough to attract the Russian man. That is true. So that's, yeah, if, if they keep on doing that, then we're going to grow our our night. Okay, talking of the development of Zambian music here in Russia, like, what what things do you need, we need to do as artists, as listeners, as fans, like, what things do you think we should do to push the, 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 the movement forward, like, to, to create an environment where, like, uh, we listen to more, like, to support the, the development of the Zambian music here? In Russia, not just in Russia to be speaking, but in other parts of the world, apart from Zambia itself. So here, like speaking for Zambians in Russia and Zambians in uh, Zambian artists somewhere else, why not in Zambia? Like, what can we do? Because in Zambia, it's easy. Uh, you release a song. Mm-hmm. It's either you promote it with radio DJs mm-hmm. or you promote it with web bloggers or mm-hmm. none can. Uh, Facebook, those bloggers, you promote it with them. If it goes viral, you you are booming. The song will become a trend. Mm-hmm. Then it's it's different here. Like, and how can we do that to make sure? Like, if you release a song, it goes, it makes, it becomes something. You know. That's a question that has so many answers. Yeah, like, okay, so you can give me a few. You can give me a few. That's your thing. Uh-huh. But you no, know, like it, it it doesn't have to be the the only answer that's mm-hmm. going to to set the standard no it's like what you think about it like what okay. can we do okay okay do it, my opinion there is need okay quite okay let's just put aside the sanctions mm-hmm. i feel there is need and i think we're even at a better advantage being abroad yeah i feel there is need to utilize these um distributing platforms yeah yeah yeah. because before i created um my account on distrokid i would be asked several times where can i get your music you even asked me before and i told you audio mark and you didn't have it i didn't have audio mark yeah you didn't have it i i got to realize that most people use spotify apple music apple music at the time, I wasn't too, I didn't have enough knowledge about it. Yeah. That and trying by all means to collaborate more yeah. with each other. I think there's a need to try and collaborate more with each other instead of like sticking to, I guess, maybe, maybe I, let me give an example of myself. Maybe I decide to just go on making music on my own or most of the time doing music alone. I think I should, it should be a deal like where people know that, oh, in Russia, there these type of artists, they already know all the artists there because of our collaboration, that's one. After that, I feel like collaborating, like you said, with other artists that are based in Russia here themselves, getting to understand them and how they go about their music. If we are able to perform in different places or find ourselves performing in bars for the meantime. I like how this guy is doing Kalem OG. Yeah. I think it's from Ghana. I feel in Nigeria. Ghana, Nigeria. Between the yeah, two I've seen him on Instagram. Yeah. yeah, I feel he's doing good and that's because to me 
it's because of his the way he's branding himself that's one the type of music yeah. he releases that's two okay anyway fine his type of music mostly has okay in his videos i see like he usually has his friends around he seems like a person that's open-minded yeah he's willing to try different things you try you fail you try again that's something i'm usually scared of trying i haven't tried to make a song in russia i haven't put it even a chorus nothing you should try yeah figuring out what type of platforms work for the russians especially at this time when there are sanctions going on utilizing play, uh, platforms like tiktok Instagram and Facebook are currently not really yeah. their thing right now. So how are you going to reach their audience? The Zambian one would be very easy. Zambia, different African countries. Other one is very simple, but how about internationally? So I think it would be first of all understanding the environment you're in, yeah. what you need to do about it, how to go about it. First stage, collaboration. Next stage, international collaboration. Your branding, your presence where are you mostly found is it tiktok what do people know you for there's a lot to do because me just producing a song and having a video isn't enough yeah. i still need to make trends that's what people like people yeah. like trends especially tiktok russians love tiktok i'll use i'll continue saying russians because i'm here they love tiktok yeah so it's basically i think understanding the environment you're in that's that's what's up that's what's up that's dope Okay, now uh, I've I've seen uh, I've heard several uh, concerns. I don't know if they're concerns or what. It's like okay, observations from people. Mm -hmm. It's like ever since you joined Nalochi, it's like your style has changed. The way you release music, like the type of music you make, has mm -hmm. changed. It's like there's not that raw, that had on B anymore. Really? Like B is now like a lover, lover girl trying to cut that to the, to the mainstream, you know. But anyway, that like, <laughs> I guess it's a music business, but like, do you think Sushi. you have changed your style? I um, haven't. After, after? I haven't. Oh, you, you haven't thought about it like, oh, it. I have, I, I know exactly. <laughs> I have an idea of what I'm doing. Basically, what I'm doing is exploring different genres. Yeah. I want to know if I'm able to hop on this beat and do something with it. Yeah. Yes, that's what I've been doing. I know it's really, you're not the first one. I've been asked before, why are you, you used to do this type of music that, I guess, hmm, for lack of better terms, is meaningful? Maybe, that's how I can put it, something that speaks to someone but that's not the only thing i want to do I, i'm an entertainer yeah. that's how i put myself i'm an entertainer but i want to explore my options i want to know what works for me by all the so, necessary yeah that's though that's nice so anyway keep making music so long it's nice we'll dance for it thank <laughs> you <laughs> oh gee all right now uh love and relationships Beach and people want to know what's going on. How is your heart on love and relationships, eh? Hmm. I have a lot to say about love. I have my days. You got your days. I have my days. Mostly, if you follow my, <laughs> you follow my social platforms, you tell that I'm usually ranting. That's because why? Where where does it all come from? All these rants, like where do they come from? What's what's going on? For the most part, it's boredom. Ah, so chill. If I see B ranting, then she's bored. Most likely. Okay. I know it's it's petty, but mostly it's boredom. <laughs> I understand what I'm saying. Boredom and hunger. No, really. How boredom and hunger. Yes. <laughs> boredom and hunger, and maybe I've been infuriated somewhere. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. But I'm trying to reduce because it's very unnecessary. I understand that. But I feel like besides like music, school, what, 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 especially whatsapp and instagram those are my like how can i put it i feel i am an entertainer there another type of entertainer there yeah. and i enjoy it when someone actually maybe responds or finds what i've put on my status funny but on the real deal okay fine um in terms of just object relationship general yeah generally relationships friendships and everything i think 
um, when I was home, I was in a closed setup. Yeah. This one is very personal, but I'm, I'm willing to share. Let's go. I was in well, a closed setup for yeah. the most part. Mm -hmm. I was always home, babysitting. I rarely used to go out. So I feel like the only time I would associate with people was in boarding school. You were in boarding no. school? Yes. I was at Kasisi Girls Secondary School. <laughs> for just grade 10 to 12? No, from grade 8 to 12. Grade 8? Yes. Yeah. And even before that, from grade 3 to grade 7, I was at Mary Queen of Peace. Oh. Is that a boarding school? Isn't it? No, that one is a, it's a day school. It's a day school. It's an all girls day school. So you, well, your whole life? Practically. Damn. Yeah, practically. So I only knew that type of setup. Yeah. I never really used to hang out with people. With boys. Guys for the most part. Yeah. So when I came here, there's a lot I had to learn. Yeah. I needed to understand that you can't be friendly to everyone. Yeah. That's one. You can't share everything yeah. with everyone or literally sharing everything about yourself with anyone. So I guess sometimes when I have a fallout with someone, because I'm used to the type of people and the type of friends I had at home, yeah. those understood me better. So when I have a fallout with someone, that's the first place I run to, my status. It's not to me, it's not to attack mm -hmm. or to get this person's attention or to cause war. That's just a way of me venting. So in short, those platforms in as much as I do it out of sometimes boredom or, or maybe I'm actually experiencing something that's my way of venting yeah what's this so now here's the thing how like at what point did you realize the, the, the dynamics are different it's like I'm used to a setup where like there's only females girls and then you are here, you find yourself like you're, you're walking, going to the to the bathroom, a guy is coming out and then you're going out like it's just not, dynamic. It's not like I necessarily never acknowledged guys, but I know they are there. They've always been there. But both male and female are like, how can I put this one? It feels like I always have to be on my tiptoes. When we were in boarding school, it was and when you're home, it's more of a safer environment because you're not worried about what the person is thinking, yeah. if their intentions are real or not. That's my family. Yeah. What would mom and dad want to do to me or my siblings? Yeah. But when I came here, I had to be cautious. Mm -hmm. People, people are firstly brought up differently. Yeah. Everyone feels a different way about something. Maybe I'm okay with the way I dress. Yeah. And I get into a relationship and the person I'm in a relationship with doesn't like the way I dress, but I usually dress like this at home. Yeah. I'm, they're okay with it. This is the way I dress. But this person would think otherwise. Yeah. Maybe they think um, you're trying to attract, uh, attract attention yeah. from uh, another, <laughs> another person. <laughs> so it was, I think there's just a lot of things that I've learned. Understanding that people feel differently about certain yeah. things. People react differently okay. about certain things. Sometimes when I make a mistake, you think I did it on purpose. Mm -hmm. So you end up going behind my back and Do something. doing something. Yeah. So that's what I've had to understand and learn. And communicating, basically. That's true. I didn't really know how to communicate with the males. Yeah. Girls, we try. How do girls communicate, first of all? It's a, it's a question. Differently. <laughs> how? <laughs> No, because, uh -huh. girl, like, it, it's a spectrum of emotions. Eh? It's like it's you, can, you can't grasp. Uh -huh. It's like there's a sympathy. Okay, for example, let, let me give an example. Eh? Uh, like, if I've done something to, let's say, my my babe or, or, or any of or my siblings or uh -huh. whatever, like they're females, eh? like, if I am not aware if I did something and then it offended them or it's like there's something I'm supposed to do, I didn't understand. Mm -hmm. If I'm not aware, it won't matter to me. Mm -hmm. But to them, it's like they can't, I have to figure it out myself without like, 
There's no clue, there's no hint, there's nothing. And I have to figure it out. Mm -hmm. That, oh, that what I did offended them. It's like, they'll just act a certain way. Okay. And then me, it's like, I, I don't know, I don't care. Uh -huh. I, there's, I don't think I've done anything wrong. It's like, I'm not aware. Uh -huh. But to them, it's like, I have to figure it out. And notice that I've offended them. Mm -hmm. It might be three days ago, it might be what, what, what. Uh -huh. So it's like, there's that dynamic that I don't understand. It's like, okay, how do girls communicate amongst themselves? Or maybe you yeah. detect when you see your friend acting all oh, weird and shy, you're like, oh, what did I do? Or did I did this and I'm sorry. Like, how, how do you grasp? Because like, you barely never communicate. It's like, you don't go to someone, like, you know what? What you did that day, you told this person, blah, 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 I didn't like it. And then you resolve your issues. You, you barely communicate for like, you're like, how, how do girls? communicate that's something i really want to know i think it really varies and i'll speak from my point of view mm. and from my the way i've been with my my friends firstly i think it's all about understanding each other that's one that's the part where i come in and say you need to understand that people react and feel differently yeah. and once you understand someone for who they are yes it so for me and the way we communicate with a small group of mine, I know when my friend isn't happy because she's throwing a tantrum or she's oh. throwing shots. Okay, so that skill of you knowing, uh -huh. I don't think most guys have that. I understand. I don't know what I'm going to do about that one. <laughs> like, I mean, it takes time. Like you, you just have to ask, keep on asking, like, what did I do? And it's always, what did I do? And then they will let you know, okay, so this day you don't remember it did, but I'm like, how can I know? Like, it... Sometimes I guess it feels like it's something that if you know this person, you would have been able to tell. That's I don't thing, know eh? if I'm like, wrong, maybe. I, I, I'm, I'm not a perfect person. Eh? Uh -huh. Like we make a lot of mistakes. Like mm -hmm. we, we do things out of, like just despicable. But then at the end of the day, it's like, I cannot recognize every wrong that I do. So okay. you have to come to me and tell me, oh, you did this. I didn't like that. That That's kind of true. communication is like as basic as, as it can be. But mm -hmm. then it makes a whole lot sense for me to even apologize or correct my wrong and stuff. Like that. But if you just expect me, you sit like this frowning all day and expect me to. <laughs> I feel, okay, I don't know. Maybe it's coming from your point of view, but. Of oh, all the times that maybe <laughs> someone tells me about their problem or personally, when I feel offended, I will tell you once. Maybe I'll be upset. Maybe I'll be calm about it. But your response about it is what ah, will okay. alter that, the next time we have a problem. That, that, okay. That's for me. I don't know how I can okay hear a lot, you know, so especially these memes. Like you say, communication is key. And then the other slide, she's, she's not talking to you. I'm fine. <laughs> See? It's a nice thing. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, another thing, eh? Mm -hmm. uh, are you in a relationship yourself? No, no, I'm not. No, no not at the moment. Uh -huh. Okay, so now, here's my, here's my question. Like, I always ask this question whenever I'm having a conversation with you. It's like, okay. Zambian men. Mm -hmm. There was just a Zambian men here in Russia. Like, not even in Russia. In general, Rapshe, like, why is that why is there so much you know <laughs> like what what what's wrong what goes on there Wait. zambian men what's wrong with zambian men yes. your take on zambian men oh my whatever whatever yeah. <laughs> ah, it's hard it's hard okay but i've only been exposed to here so i would be mm. just, it would because be here here that's about. where there's a thing like here it's a thing most girls are like hey, zambian men shy, shy, shy. No, like what's your take on zambian men do you also think they are for like that or they shy <laughs> oh wow this is an uncomfortable question no okay if you don't want to answer we can move on uh, i can't if can i if i, if I no. try to find an answer maybe okay like what's your take do you think like they are good guys but then due to circumstances they end up acting as a ten. Yeah. Oh, it's just the way it is. 
Oh, it's just out of anger, Che. No, it's not out of anger. There, there are times, okay, even girls, but okay, you ask me about guys. But <laughs> I think they are good people. Fact is, they're good guys. They're good. They will always be good and bad guys. Fact. But when you come here, maybe, maybe I'm wrong. Yeah. So I'll speak from that perspective. When you come to the diaspora, firstly, when we were home, when you're walking with a guy, you never be holding each other's hands and the like, or be able to make out in the road mm. and blah, blah, blah. You're always hiding at home. Yeah. So when you come here, you see these people's culture. This is from my perspective. You see these, how, they, how they do their things, how they, I guess, make out wherever, hold hands, go to places. There's just a, there's a huge difference with how love is portrayed here and the way it is at home. At home, it's secrecy. Okay, so I feel like when guys <laughs> are here, they feel they have access Ooh. to anyone they want but even it's, it's been like that it's you know, been no. like that that's fine yeah. okay you want to okay fine you and i start dating mm. that's cool that's chilled you don't like me anymore why can't you tell me i'm not feeling this relationship anymore uh you don't want to hurt their feelings you hurt their feelings more by getting into another relationship or entanglement it's automatic. I get you. I get you. It's like, it's, it's a matter of communication at the end of the day. Yeah. The reason why most girls complain, I think, if I'm not mistaken, I don't know. Yeah. It's that it's basically the cheating or cheating. being two-faced. What do you mean by two-faced? You, you want to be with me, but you want to be with someone else at the same time. How? Make it make sense. I mean, if I go and do the same thing to you, you won't like it. <laughs> I get you, but then do you realize, like, most in most cases, you might be the the, the safe option. So before you become the the main option, they have to explore this other. But that's areas. the thing. I'm already my mind is already set on you. You are my safe and only option. Why do you have to treat people like safe and second and third? I mean, huh. you must attend. You have to give people the, like, I mean, they, they have to make their own choices at the end of the day. Touche. That's why as you make your choice, you're better off just letting it known. Like, I think I'm done here. But the guys usually, you know, <laughs> they do the same thing. They just start ignoring you. Okay. Uh, start I, acting a certain way. Or they want so to. now, here's the thing. This is something that we... Or most people, like me and other people, have noticed in, in most of your, your lyrics, like the previous songs you've written. Is it all about something that's going on in your life uh, relating to relationships and stuff like that? No wonder there's... Because the previous song you released with... with Shino. Shino, yeah. Mm -hmm. Like it was about the heartbreaks and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So does it connect to... How, what you go on your lyrics, your music, does it, do you offload those emotions in music or yeah. is just like a different story? It's 60%, I'll tell you about what's happening mm -hmm. in my life. 40%, I'll try to make it interesting yeah. in a way that you can listen to it. Yeah, yeah. makes sense. All right, now this part, like we're almost uh, wrapping up our, okay. our conversation. And oh, I just want to say like thanks for coming to like it's been it's been amazing. Like, Thank you. It's always a wonderful uh, no encounter. Mm -hmm. But then now it's like this part is the VMXO trivia. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to ask you several questions, and then you're going to give me answers. If you're correct, mm -hmm. uh, at the end of the day, we'll get you'll get you a, a prize. So, if you get all five correct, you get a prize. So, first question is, who were the first people to appear on the first ever episode of the Cube Session? I'll give you a hint. There were three. Ah. That's a hint. Three. You. Name, 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 name. Jones. Mm -hmm. Gabriel. Mm -hmm. And Shepard. And Shepard. Good job, good job, good job. That's the first one. You got it correct. Okay, number two. 
What's the first ever project we worked on? Me and you, like the first ever project ever worked on. What, what, what's, what is it called? Say my name by Poza. Ah, okay. Hey, you know your history. Let's go. Okay, number three. Who was the first vice executive leader of the entertainment department of the Zamso Association? Wasn't it me? <laughs> <laughs> yes, that was you. That's correct. There. Last one. Mm -hmm. What is John's favorite beer? What is it? I think you bought it just now. <laughs> nine. Nine what? Tika. Eh? No, nine, nine. Say it in Russian. Bautika what? Bautika Devi. Bautika Devi. Okay, good girl. Okay, last question now. The last one. Who's the president of Russia? Vladimir Putin. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. So we'll give you your, your prize after this. So, but at the end of it, all, um, uh -huh. I would just love to uh, thank you for coming through. Thank you for having. We had a wonderful conversation. Unless there's something else you want to say, maybe to your people, your fans, what they're expecting, like you for should be looking out for more music and stuff like that. Okay. Um. What you should expect from me, firstly, is more music. I think I owe it to a lot of people that have been supporting me yeah. for the longest time and that actually believe in me. So I owe a lot of music and not just um, one specific genre, sincerely speaking. I'll continue exploring that's every that's chance that's I get. Yes. Awesome. Um, expect to see me pushing harder, especially with, I guess, just trying to put my music out there as much as possible. And I'm graduating. Mm, that's good, <laughs> that's good, that's good. All right, uh, B. Chanda, thanks for coming through. This has been the Cube Session, and we'll catch you guys in the next one. Don't forget to subscribe, like, share, and comment. And peace.